कुंज बिहारी कोपी जनावल भागिरी वरदारी कोपी जनावल भागिरी वरदारी यशोदानंदना जन रंजन यशोदानंदना ब्रज जन रंजन नमुना तीरावन मुना तीरा मन चारे राधा मधवा कुंज बिहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Jaya Radhe 
श्याम राधे श्याम राधे श्याम जय राधे श्याम नीताय गौर हरि बो ूतले स्वयं कदाति स्वादाति वंदेहा श्रीगुर श्रीयुता पदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीरूपा सागर जाता सह गना रघुनाथा तम सजीवा साधता सवदूता वरिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका राधा का नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशाकूप्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैताधर श्रीवासुदी गौरा भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवतम की ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Krishna everyone so we're reading from uh, canto number 4 this morning chapter number 22 entitled Prithu Maharaj is meeting with the Kumaras and we're reading from text number 46 Sumeva Brahmano Bhungte Sumeva Brahmano स्वम वस्ते स्वम ददाति च तस्वानुग्रहे नाम भुंजते क्षत्रियाद स्वे भ्रमणो भुंक्ते स्वम वस्ते स्वम ददाति तस्वानुग्रहे नान भुंजते क्षत्रियाद स्वे भ्रमणो भुंक्ते स्वम वस्ते स्वम ददाति 
तस्वानुग्रहे नानम भुंजते क्षत्रियादय ब्राह्मणो भुंते स्वस्ते स्वंगदाति स्वस्ते कुंजते क्षत्रियाद्रियाद ब्राह्मणो भुंते word for word swam own eva certainly brahmana the brahmana bhungte enjoy swam own vaste clothing swam own dadati gives in charity cha and Dasya, his, Eva, certainly, Anugrahena, by the mercy of, Anam, food grains, Bhunjate, eats, Kshatriyadaya, are the divisions of society, headed by the Kshatriyas. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Shri A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shri Lopabhupada Ki. The Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras eat their food by the virtue of the Brahmana's mercy. It is the Brahmanas who enjoy their own property, clothe themselves with their own property and give charity with their own property. <coughs> purport. <coughs> The supreme personal, <coughs> the supreme personality of Godhead is worshipped with the words Namo Brahmanya Devaya, which indicate that the supreme Lord accepts the Brahmanas as worshipable gods. The supreme Lord is worshipped by everyone, yet to teach others he worships the Brahmanas. Everyone should follow the instructions of the Brahmanas, for their only business is to spread Shabda Brahma. Or the Vedic knowledge all over the world. Whenever there is a scarcity of Brahmanas to spread Vedic knowledge, chaos throughout human society results. Since Brahmanas and Vaishnavas are direct servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they do not depend on others. In actuality, everything in the world belongs to the Brahmanas, and out of their humility, the Brahmanas accept charity from the Kshatriyas or kings and the Vaishyas or merchants. 
Everything belongs to the Brahmanas, but the Kshatriya government and the mercantile people keep everything in custody, like bankers. And whenever the Brahmanas need money, the Kshatriyas and Vaishyas should supply it. It is like a savings account with money which the depositor can draw out at his will. The Brahmanas being engaged in the service of the Lord have very little time to handle the finances of the world and therefore the riches are kept by the Kshatriyas or the kings who are to produce money upon the Brahmanas demand. Actually the Brahmanas or Vaishnavas do not live at others cost. They live by spending their own money, although it appears that they are collecting this money from others. Kshatriyas and Vaishyas have no right to give charity, for whatever they possess belongs to the Brahmanas. Therefore, charity should be given by the Kshatriyas and Vaishyas under the instructions of the Brahmanas. Unfortunately, at the present moment, there is scarcity of Brahmanas, and since the so-called Kshatriyas and Vaishyas do not carry out the orders of the Brahmanas, the world is in a chaotic condition. The second line of this verse indicates that the Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras eat only by the virtue of the Brahmanas' mercy. In other words, they should not eat anything which is forbidden by the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas and Vaishnavas know what to eat, and by their personal example, they do not eat anything which is not offered first to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They eat only prashad or remnants of the food offered to the Lord. The Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Sudras should eat only Krishna prashad, which is afforded them by the mercy of the Brahmanas. They cannot open slaughterhouses and eat meat, fish or eggs or drink liquor, or earn money for this purpose without authorization. In the present age, because society is not guided by Brahminical instruction, the whole population is absorbed in sinful activities. Consequently, everyone is deservedly being punished by the laws of nature. This is the situation in this age of Kali. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here Prabhupada shares a revolutionary concept. Everything in the world is owned by the Brahmanas. And all the other three Varnas are simply caretakers. In other words, when the Brahmanas eat, it's not that they're begging from someone else to eat. Rather they're using uh, what is this. Uh, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, they are only caretakers. And when the Brahmanas desire something, they should immediately supply. Why are the Brahmanas said to be uh, the owners of everything? Because they know the proper utility. According to the universal system, one can only be the rightful owner of something if they know the proper utility of that thing. If one owns something but they misuse it, actually they're not qualified to be the owner of that thing. And therefore Krishna himself gives so much uh, respect to the Brahmanas because the Brahmanas have the understanding of how everything should be utilized. But then one must be a bona fide Brahmana, one must have knowledge. Uh, therefore, in Shastra it's explained, Janmana Jayate Sudra. In this world, everyone is born a Sudra. Samskarat Bhavet Vija. But then if someone takes the uh, samskara of becoming a Brahmana, then they become twice born. But that in itself is not enough. Veda Pathat Bhavet Vipro. But then after taking samskara, they should study Veda, they should study knowledge and then they could be said to be a Vipra. But even more than that, Brahma Jana Titi Brahmana. After all your study of Shastra, only if you really understand who is Brahman can you be understood to be a Brahmana. So everyone is a Sudra. By Samskara you become a, a, a Dvija. But then by Veda Pathat, by study, you become a Vipra. But then ultimately, only when you know the Supreme Lord, then you can be understood to be a real Brahmana. So such Brahmanas 
are very uh, important in society. We're living in the age of quarrel and hypocrisy, uh, as Prabhupada says in the final uh, paragraph. Therefore, we need Brahmanas. One commentator, he commentates on the pastime of Krishna uh, extinguishing the forest fire in Vrindavan. So, now then he asks the question, when Krishna wanted to extinguish the forest fire, why did Krishna swallow the fire? Why didn't Krishna put a bucket of water on the fire? Or why didn't Krishna, with a flash of his hands, uh, ex uh, you know, blow out the fire? Why did Krishna specifically decide to swallow the forest fire? What is the meaning of that? Why is that so significant? Anyone know? Every demon or every occurrence in Vrindavan has a corresponding anartha, isn't it? So if, say for example, Putana, she signifies the anartha of the false guru. Someone who comes and says, I will serve, but then actually they're trying to kill you. So Putana, for example, signifies the false guru. When the forest fire breaks out, does anyone remember what is the anartha or the defect or the challenge that the forest fire represents within our lives? Uh, yes, the burning forest fire, good metaphor, but specifically, yes? Material attachments, good, but not exactly what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. Doubts, uh, not exactly. Exactly, yes. The forest fire represents intercommunal discord, arguing amongst uh, different uh, members of a society. Isn't it just like in a forest? How does a forest fire begin? There are two bamboo sticks and there's some friction. And it causes a spark and then there's a flame and then there's a fire and before you know it there's a forest fire so that's how it works in a society of people that there's a little bit of friction there's some difference of opinion and before you know it there's a big fire in the community so the forest fire represents the arguments that take place between people in a community so why now does Krishna swallow the forest fire now you can think of a clue of why Krishna swallows the forest fire. Because in the social body, who represents the feet? The sudras. Who represents the stomach? The vaishyas. The vaishyas. Who represents the arms? The kshatriyas. And who represents the face? The brahmanas. And when Krishna eats, how does Krishna eat? He says, I eat through the mouths of the... Brahmanas. So when Krishna wants to extinguish the fire, forest fire, what does he do? He swallows the forest fire. And why does he do that? Because it's symbolic that when there are arguments in a community, when there is difference of opinion, when there is friction, the only way you will create peace in that community is if there are genuine Brahmanas in the community. Because when there are Brahmanas in the community who number one have knowledge and number two have no agenda, they have a pure heart, then everyone can trust them. Therefore they can then come in and say, no, no, this is how it should be and everyone will put their opinion to one side because of their respect for those Brahmanas. But if you don't have Brahmanas in a society, genuine Brahmanas, then everyone will continue to fight with their different opinions. And therefore, next time you see Krishna swallowing the forest fire, you can remember this. It represents the facts that only Brahmanas can uh, create peace in the world because of their purity and because of their profound insight, their knowledge. Brahmanas, they give the best gift to the world because they give the gift of knowledge. 
You see, knowledge changes everything. Knowledge changes how you see the world. Knowledge changes how you react to things. Knowledge changes how your ability to take lessons from different things. Have you noticed how different people can see the same thing, but see completely different <coughs> things? Have you noticed? Just like there were two boys who once had a who had an alcoholic father. One of them grew up to be an alcoholic, and another one grew up to be a complete abstainer from alcohol. So they went to the person, the boy who became an alcoholic, and they said, "You, you became an alcoholic. Why did you become an alcoholic?" He said, "My whole childhood, I watched my alcoholic father." They went to the other child who uh, never touched a drop of alcohol. They say, why did you never touch a drop of alcohol? He said, my whole childhood, I grew up watching my alcoholic father. Interesting. They both saw exactly the same thing. They both were experienced and subjected to exactly the same thing. But they concluded something completely different. Because our vision is not, not our sight, our vision in Sanskrit is called darshan. Understand? Darshan means to see. It doesn't just mean what you see with your eyes, but it means what you see with your mind, your heart and your intelligence. The brahmanas have the ability to give you uh, Bhagavat darshan. The ability to see everything through the eyes of uh, Krishna. Shastra Chakshush. Our vision of anything is basically made up of three things. Condition, interaction, and connection. Okay? If you want to know why people have different visions of the same thing, it's because they have a different condition, they have a different interaction, and they have a different connection. What do I mean by this? Condition means... Each of us come into this world with a nature from a previous life. Therefore, we've all experienced different things from different lives. If you ever do a past life regression, uh, anyone ever done past life regression? I tried like 11 times to do it. I couldn't do it. You have to just be in a very relaxed state and stop them. You can actually, we have one devotee in London who helps devotees do it. You can do a past life regression and you can find out who you were and what experiences you went through in previous lives that make you the way you are now. In other words, the first thing that affects the way we see life is our nature that we're coming into this world with, our condition from a previous life. But then on top of that, our vision is made up of our interaction in this life. There were certain people who we grew up with. There were certain experiences that we had in our childhood. There were certain events that we went through. And all of that also affects our vision of life. This in sociology is known as nurture. So what makes up the way we look at life? Nature or our condition from previous life. Nurture or our interaction with this life. But there's one more thing that can dramatically change your vision of life. Some people think, I have a nature and I have a nurture, therefore the way I look at life will always be like this. But what they don't understand is that there's a third thing that can change your vision of life, and that is connection. Connection with Brahma Gyan, or spiritual knowledge. The moment you access spiritual knowledge, even you may have a certain nature, you may have a certain nurture, your vision of life can change because spiritual knowledge can give you a completely different perspective. And why then are brahmanas so important? Because brahmanas are the ones who are coming into the world giving you Brahma Gyan. Because Brahma Jana, Titi Brahmana, because they know Brahma Gyan. Therefore, they can give you a different vision by which to look at life. You can't change what's going to happen around you, but you can change the way you look at it. 
And therefore, Brahmanas give you the best opportunity to change your life because they give you the best opportunity to change your vision. And so, uh, this, is, uh, this is why Brahmanas are so important. Of course, all the four Varnas are important. All the four Varnas are fighting different things. Sudras, they fight indolence or laziness because Sudras are active. So you need active people. So Sudras, they fight indolence or laziness. Vaishyas, they fight insufficiency because they provide resource. They provide their, like the stomach. They're giving... Um, different things to society by which society can run. Kshatriyas, what do they fight? They fight injustice. And therefore that's very important. Because you can have activity and resource in a society, but very, very quickly they can become uh, exploitation of people. Therefore Kshatriyas are there, they fight injustice. So if Sudras fight indolence, if Kshatriyas fight, uh, if Vaishyas fight insufficiency, if Kshatriyas fight injustice, what do you think Brahmanas fight? Ignorance. Ignorance. And when a society is free of ig ignorance, free of injustice, free of insufficiency and free of indolence, then a society becomes powerful, even in a Hare Krishna temple. We need to make sure we fight laziness, indolence, we need to fight insufficiency, there needs to be enough funds, we need to fight injustice, everyone has to have equal rights, and we need to fight ignorance, everyone should understand what's the ultimate goal that we're trying to achieve here. moment one of those things are lost is going to be very, very difficult. Therefore, systematically by Krishna's arrangement, these four orders are there because they all value different things. Sudras value um, security. Vaishyas, they value um, money. Kshatriyas, they value uh, justice. And uh, Brahmanas, they value knowledge. Therefore, if you're ever in a meeting and sometimes you're trying to come up with a solution, what's the solution in this situation? Uh, depending on what varna the person is in, they will come up with different solutions. See, brahmanas will always see that the solution is we need to educate people. Kshatriyas will always come up with the solution that there needs to be a managerial change here. There needs to be a change in structure. Uh, Vaishyas, when they look at a problem, they're looking at it from, from the problem from the perspective of finance and infrastructure. If we have a better building, if we have more money in the bank, if we have uh, these things, they think then the problems will be solved. And if it's a sudra, they will see as long as everyone is secure, that is the solution. So therefore, all of these four Varnas are very, very important. And all of these four Varnas work together. And in the Krishna Consciousness Movement, Srila Prabhupada wanted, actually, the Krishna Consciousness Movement to create Brahmanas. Why do we need Brahmanas in the Krishna Consciousness Movement? Because then, internally within our movement, we can maintain the purity and focus of what this movement is actually for. In the 12th canto of the Bhagavatam, it's being mentioned that money is the root of all evil. Even in the biblical tradition, it's said like that. Love of money is the root of all evil. So if you look at the world, as soon as money comes into the equation, the very purpose of something becomes lost. For example, previously, the purpose of universities was to make people wise. But now universities are all just about money, generating money. And for, because of that, the purpose of making people wise has been sidelined. 
If you look at the purpose of a hospital, is to make people physically more, more, more better, more well. But now, since hospitals are all run with so much financial consideration, the top priority is not now attending to the health, it's running a business. The justice system was meant to give out fair trial to everyone. But the moment money came into the equation, justice was put to the side and now it's a business. And you know, even in the Krishna consciousness movement, as soon as money comes in, the goal of the Krishna consciousness movement, which is to make its members Krishna conscious and share Krishna consciousness with others, even that can become sidelined according to money. Therefore, Brahmanas are required within our movement in order to keep the focus of where this movement is supposed to go. And Brahmanas are also required within this movement so that we can go out in the world and we can share with the world how the real solutions to the world can come about. Um, because there are Brahmanas who actually have understood this knowledge and can then apply it to the world. Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Shri Ki And so uh, here in this verse and purple what is being mentioned is uh, how Brahmanas are um, ultimately the proprietors of everything and uh, other um, varnas should work in cooperation with them because they have uh, knowledge and so uh, today we discuss what is the characteristic of a brahmana that they know uh, they know brahman they have bhagavat gyan but brahma gyan what is the contribution of a brahmana they give people spiritual vision and they create harmony amongst all the varnas and the ashrams. What is the uh, connection between the brahmanas and the other varnas? Uh, the brahmanas basically, uh, in, with a culture of respect, connect with the different varnas because each varna fights a different thing and ultimately like that they can be very progressive uh, civilization. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> Why does the Krishna Consciousness Movement need Brahmanas? Internally we need Brahmanas for the protection of our own purity and externally going out into the world for preaching we need real Brahmanas because then they can give real solutions to the problems that the world is facing. So these are some thoughts on uh, this verse in which uh, Srila Prabhupada in the purple is talking about the glory of Brahmanas, the importance of Brahmanas. Okay, maybe I'll stop there and see whether there may be any questions, comments, or any reflections. Yes. Thank you very much, Marj. Um My question actually arose, uh, you mentioned how the brahmanas technically own everything. So uh, you also mentioned this fact of how the kshatriyas and vaishyas, in a way, are not capable of offering because anyway the brahmanas own everything. And when you mentioned that, I was reminded of how in the Chaitanya Charitamrita there are descriptions of how uh, when our Vaishnava acharyas were uh, begging the associates of Lord Chaitanya, and then Lord Chaitanya said, it's like prostitution, don't even do that. And then I was thinking, they are the highest form of Brahmanas in a way. And they were begging to maintain their body and soul together, you know, so to speak. So how should we understand this, that there is a strict uh, um, restriction that Lord Chaitanya puts, that they should not uh, be outside there and begging, but at the same time, we also realize everything belongs to the Brahmanas anyway. So this would be my first question. Okay, so uh, you're referring to Raghunath Das Goswami, mm -hmm. who is in Jagannath Puri, and then when he comes to Jagannath Puri, then the first thing he does is, he begins uh, 
begging from some houses or some places a few times a day and then later on he decides that he will only say at the Simhadwara gate and beg alms and then whoever comes and gives then he'll accept that and then later on he it's understood that maybe this is like a, this is like a prostitution you're looking and you're seeing who will give me something um, rather than he just decides to take something reject and in that way so in one sense um, should the brahmanas beg uh, but here we're saying that the brahmanas own everything so your question is basically should the brahmanas beg is that your yes um, in a way I sl see a slight contradiction I... sorry yes. yeah. that on one hand brahmanas it seems they're begging mm -hmm. in another sense they shouldn't beg because it's theirs anyway yes what yeah. I find interesting is that even the fact that they are begging is in a way uh, reprimanded that they're begging but I was thinking, but anyway, the Brahmana owns everything. So, like, technically speaking, yeah. it is okay. I think it's a question of perspective. Like, say, for example, from a Brahmana's perspective, they don't demand that they own anything. So, therefore, a Brahmana always keeps themselves in the humble position. A Brahmana is always actually uh, purposely keeping themselves in poverty because that helps them to uh, ensure that they don't um, become compromised by having so many things. And therefore, from the brahmana's side, a brahmana will never demand anything. A brahmana will never expect anything. Although even Krishna is saying, everything is yours. But the brahmana will always remain purposely in a poverty-stricken position and will not claim proprietorship to anything. Rather, they will say, everything is the Supreme Lord's. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, everything is for Krishna. But from the side of the Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras, they should look at the Brahmanas and realize, actually everything is this. And we are just taking care of it. So, uh, this vision which is given that everything is the property of the Brahmanas, is something uh, that Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras need to understand. The Brahmanas, they, uh, they will never demand anything, they will never expect anything. They uh, are therefore like beggars. Um, and they keep themselves in that humble position in order to maintain their own purity and uh, in order to then perform the function that they're supposed to perform. But this knowledge that ultimately everything is the property of the Brahmanas is something that specifically the Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sutras should understand. So that when they're dealing with these things, they never think that these things are mine. We're simply caretakers. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you very much. If I may ask another question, yeah, it's a short sure. one. Um, you had mentioned uh, which uh, the Varnas and what they fight and what they value. And you mentioned how the Shudras value security. For me, the others are still clear, but uh, when it is stated that Shudras value security, if you could please enunciate what, what that encompasses. Yeah, basically they are concerned about the basic human necessities of life. Food, shelter and clothing. Roti kapra makan, as they say. Just like if you, like this modern uh, social psychologist Maslow talked about the hierarchy of needs. So on the base level, people have basic physiological needs. Then higher than that, they have emotional needs. Then higher than that, they have social needs. Then higher than that, they have esteem needs. And then higher than that, they have spiritual needs. So for uh, sudras, mainly they are concerned with physical and emotional needs. And therefore, for a sudra, if they are given uh, the basic necessities of life, then they are happy. Vaishyas, they tend to need uh, more, on top of that, they need to uh, also have um, some sense of esteem, some sense of recognition. Kshatriyas, on top of that, need to have some sense of power or control. Um, 
and then the brahmanas are very looking very much for spiritual connection so when we say the sudras they value security basically their main consideration is um, how can i uh, how can i find my necessities of life Anyone else like to ask any questions? Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, you mentioned that uh, money pollutes all the whole system, all Varnas, um, even in ISKCON. But well, what would be the solution? I mean, nowadays without money, nothing works. In my understanding, yeah. So um, no, that therefore um, we need money. Yeah, just like there was that picture of that yogi, and he was like, you know, he was in the paper, and he was like, no, no, like this, I don't want money. And Prabhupada said, you should take a picture of me, and I'll put my arms around the money like this. <laughs> I, I'll take it, use it for Krishna. So yes, we need money. Um, but you, therefore, you need vaishyas. We need vaishyas in our movement to generate funds because without that, nothing will happen. But then you also need brahmanas to counterbalance it. If it only, if our movement is only vaishyas, then uh, becoming money will become the prime objective of the Krishna consciousness movement. But we understand that money is not the goal. Money is simply a means to achieve the goal. So the brahmanas, they're able to see how to utilize that money. Firstly, how to obtain that money in a way which doesn't compromise our principles. And then once that money is uh, received, how to then spend it in a way that doesn't compromise but furthers our principles. So we need money. But the point is that we then also need enough brahmanas. Sometimes what happens to ha what tends to happen in the material world is that whoever makes the money decides whatever's done with the money. I made the money, therefore I decide what happens with it. That's a recipe for disaster. Because you had the knowledge to make the money, that doesn't mean you have the knowledge to understand the best utilization of that money. Because generally, the person who has the knowledge to make the money if you give them the decision of how to spend that money, their decision will generally be based on how spending that money will make more money. <laughs> That's the psychology, right? <laughs> if, if, if I know how to make good money, and therefore I bring good money in, and then you say, now you brought all that money in, you decide how to spend it. Naturally, by my vision, I will spend that money in such a way that it will bring more money. Because that's my basic way I see life. So, that's not always a good formula for the Krishna consciousness movement in terms of its a, um, achieving what it's meant to achieve. Of course, sometimes we do need to spend money in the Krishna consciousness movement in a way that it generates more money. But if that becomes the basis for every decision on spending, we're going to be in trouble. So yeah, we need money for sure. Um, but how that money is obtained and then how that money is spent needs to be carefully looked at. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Because remember also when uh, Kali wanted a place to reside, then what did Parikshit say? Abhyardita stadata smai stanani kalaye dudo Dyutam panam striya suna yatra adharma chaturvida. Pariksha said, you want a place to reside? I'll give you chaturvida adharma. Four places where adharma resides, you can stay there. Dyutam, where there's gambling. Panam, where there's intoxication. Striya, where there's illicit sex. Suna, where there's meat eating. Kali said, but in your kingdom there's nowhere where these things are taking place. So Pariksha said, okay, then you can stay where gold is hoarded or where money is hoarded. 
because in that place these things definitely will come about. Therefore, even if you see when brahmanas, when they have money, they spend it immediately. They don't keep huge amounts of money. Now, obviously, we have to be practical because we need some sense of security. But generally, collecting more and more funds and keeping them uh, is dangerous. Therefore, generally, brahmanas, they get and then they give. They get and then they spend. Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, even when he ran Gaudiya Math, he would uh, run it on the line, like so, like they would just have enough because that would keep everyone active. So there's a whole science of how to deal with uh, money appropriately, otherwise that money, it can destroy, dangerous. Any other questions? Okay, so shall we close then? Yeah, eight forty-five. Grantaraj Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jana Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai. So this one Bhagavan Kishat Maharaj Ki Thank you.